theme music, theme music. Welcome to the podcast, do 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 do, do or the day four devotion, or unraveled, or you, you changed up the intro. I did, I did. Are you supposed to say okay and we're live? Yes, that is that was my line. I had it written oh, down. The free line of, are we on? I are we on? on? We okay. no, I'm not on. I'm not on. We're on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so I we are we're are, we're here after a one week hiatus. Um, yes. Happiness took the week off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it did. It was a uh, it was a bizarre week for me. Uh, I was in COVID jail. Um, yes. So we had a case. Yeah, I, I did not have COVID. Um, we had some some COVID in our house. It was all, for the most part, asymptomatic. Um, wasn't a big deal. You know, I, didn't, I didn't want to do it through Ben uh, at his home because I where he the, the coronavirus is there. I didn't want a computer to get a virus. You know. So. Right. Sure. Yes. This is this is more tech talk. More tech talk <laughs> coming. Computers get got viruses too, right? Like, that's, that's true. true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we are in uh, week ten. We're in prophecy, and we're in a new kind of uh, subset. So you know, at the start, uh, you know, we were in beginnings. That makes sense. And then, uh, of course, we were with set apart, and now we are in singing the sacred. And we we're talking on Sunday about how. Uh, well, one just to throw out that uh, in terms of of music, you know, psalms were songs, and uh, and we were talking about eras of music and how it is, you know, I know I don't have to convince you it is, well, it's not really up for debate that the 90s no. had the best music. Right. And I know every generation thinks that their generation did and um, and they're just wrong. Yep. Uh, they've got more wronger, which I think is a word. That's right. Uh, generations have passed. Like if, if this, if you are the current generation of popular music and you think that music has now hit its peak, um, you know, you're, you just you, you need Jesus. You need the Lord. That's you right. You're back. you're in the in the wronger camp as opposed to the gooder camp. That's right. That, yes, that, there's the wronger and the gooder. Yes. So as opposed to the writer. maybe you know what? Maybe uh, if we you know we've talked about unraveled. Maybe that could be the uh, that could be the podcast name. The, the wronger and the gooder. The wronger and the gooder. I think, I think, I think we know who's who. who. Yeah, and so. <laughs> Uh, I think the, people will probably put us in the same camp, but I don't want to say which yeah, one. Yeah, I feel like Unraveled still is still winning. It really um, does this thing, yeah. So in, in the '90s, and you know what? It's really not a '90s thing. Like, there's I think there's tons of music. I mean, even today, you know, like some of what uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in that stage of life where my kids are are listening to music that's different than mine. Some of it, and I have no idea what, like some of those songs are talking about i should probably investigate it more honestly um <laughs> but there's you know I, we've talked about this a bunch that and, and you and i've had the conversation i think that in the 90s uh the strength of a song uh, or the strength of a song writer oh, i need to turn my light on in the dark here um is you could write a song that didn't make any sense yes and you know like one of, one of the big hits um that you know everybody knows uh from the 90s would be from the band oasis that wonderwall right yes and it's just like what what is this talking about wonderwall is not even a thing at least no. not that i know of no and it's a generational song like it's it that, is. that's one that's like that's still one that like you know i i get a little uh i don't know if offended is the right word i don't like that one i get a little antsy when it's kind of become like a like a hipster claim yes so like Go to like a college party and like sing Wonderwall. Yeah, so yeah. Like, no, Wonderwall is a great song. Don't ruin it. But but what makes it a great song? Yeah. I I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I guess I, just I that know. it that it stuck and then it it went along. Anyway, the the point that we're kind of belaboring here a little bit is singing something mindlessly yes. and not thinking about what it is. And I think that we can be guilty of that with the Psalms. And, you know, sometimes you just read them and you don't even know uh, what they're attached to. Now, in terms of prophecy that we're talking to today, or talking about today, um, when we start with the verse in Psalm 22, 1, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Uh, that one's pretty easy to place. Yeah, absolutely, right? So we're obviously going... 
to Jesus on the cross. But here's the thing is that like, these are, these are, these are Psalms, you know, from, from David. These are, these are messianic Psalms. They're messianic prophecy, but it's, it's hard to say how that would have landed in David's time. And then how it travels across. But by the time it gets to Jesus, when Jesus makes that cry, like, you got to know that there's got to be at least some on site that hear that and go, oh, my goodness. Like, oh, well, for the Jew, David. for the Jew, there's no doubt about it. Right. What he's saying. Right. Like, I think that part of even understanding a lot of these Psalms and, and knowing them and understanding parts of the Old Testament helps you understand why Jesus was so offensive in his crowd in that day, right? Because when we talk about Jesus being offensive, um, we don't necessarily put it in, in Bible or Jesus times, right? Like even the idea of Jesus being counterculture is like, well, he was just saying to be nice to people. Like, I, like you look at the things that Jesus said, like what, what is there to be angry about? But when you understand right. these Old Testament believing Jews, uh, there was a lot, like, because, you know, he's claiming to be God. Yes, and we have to understand how culturally sensitive that is, because you might think, in today's age, yeah, so some Yahoo at the mall did that. I didn't even blink at him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, we, we just be dismissive. We say that's obviously a crazy person. And that's not what's happening here. No. Right? The fact that Jesus is so methodical the fact that jesus is so brilliant because he's god and he's god right and so he is an obvious threat to some power to some cultural norms like he's going to turn this whole thing upside down and that's why he is wildly offensive and this is the thing is like you know when we get into passages like this this is where we're getting into the future telling kind of prophecy which is the kind that everybody loves right right most of the old testament prophecy is not like that right you know what i mean it's not the and look for the it's, it's just a word from god to people uh, for a specific time for a specific purpose that often you know goes on from there but this is that isolated kind of prophecy that i think most people get very excited about right right where you have something from a from centuries before that then points to like literally the 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 only thing more pivotal than the crucifixion of Christ is the resurrection of Christ. Right. So you've got like this like like the, the most significant event in history that this is pointing directly towards. And, and and that's what makes understanding what we're saying or for the Psalms what we're singing, if you will, so important. And it, it really causes us to think about, you know, the the words we say or the songs that we sing, um, you know, even, even in scripture that we have memorized, you know, yes. uh, you and I had a conversation about the Lord's Prayer and, you know, I know we, you, know, you and I both preached on it, that it was more of a guide than it is like something I want you to recite verbatim and not that there isn't value. It's in, wonderful to say it. In, in praying that prayer verbatim. Um, but if we're going to do that, you know, we should know what it means. It's kind of like, you know, I can think of when we were kids, uh, you know, and I think for a lot of people, I think we were probably among the last. Oh, I remember when the, we stopped doing it. We used to recite it at school, mm -hmm. right? That we, we sang, uh, Oh, Canada. And then we did the, the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, I don't know that when I was like seven or eight years old, like I'm, I'm quite certain that as I said, you know, give us today our daily bread. I don't think I was thinking about the expanse of the Lord's provision. I probably conjured to mind a loaf of bread in my, my eight year old right. mind. I, I think I remember correcting you about oh, that uh, in the second year of Bible college. Yes. <laughs> that was, yeah. That was second year. Like the hollowed out O in God. Right? Oh it man. I the, set that. No, I just walked right I, into yeah. that one. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, you know, we think about a, a eight year old kid saying, Hallowed be thy name, <laughs> right? And just like you're, you're saying it, but like, you know, we want to, you know, again, again, you and I were talking about, you know, we've taken it from scripture, we've taken it from 
you talk about singing things you don't understand when you're in the 90s music but like you know i i have a deep affection for the hymns and one of my favorites has always been it is well with my soul we sang it at church just again recently and i love the story behind it with horatio spafford if you don't know that story you should look it up mm -hmm. um but you know i do remember as a kid like it just kind of is like striking me as you sing when sorrows like sea billows roll like, i don't know what that means i don't know what a sea billow is you know what I mean? And there's, yeah. and there's lots of things, you know, when we're going through Psalms or we're singing worship, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're understanding. And for young ones coming up or new people in the church, we want to, not in a patronizing way, no. but we want to make sure that people understand because it's important. Well, and it's again, it's like we've been talking about all along uh, with these Bible words that keep coming up, mm -hmm. right? No, not, not that sea billows is a, is a Bible word, but uh you know, you mentioned with, with Easter coming up, right? And we sing Hosanna. And yeah. and we'll sing Hosanna in songs. Yes. Right. Because, you know, when you sing something like God save us, well, look, let's move into the next scripture here because that's going to bring us in, right? Okay. So Psalm 118 verse 22 says, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, save us, or God, save us. Lord, grant us success. Which, by the way, that's where that Hosanna is, is God, save us. Okay? And then it says, this will sound familiar, talking about coming into Easter. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalm and so 18. we have a bunch of kids singing Hosanna, but I want my kids to know that we're that you're singing God save us. Right. You know, we can sing out hallelujah. And a lot of people do like, you know, you think it's so funny. Cause you think about how much that's even moved it's, or say moved. It's just remained in our culture. Right. That, anybody from any walk of life when like something turns out you know whether it's like something you've really been waiting for like maybe you got the job you wanted or a medical review you wanted or you get the last parking spot at walmart near the door <laughs> hallelujah right hallelujah and people just think that means really really good you know and, and hallelujah is actually a command word right it's which because we'll translate well it's praise the lord and actually this is this is an instance where really uh, that King James English actually, I think, translates it better where it says, praise ye the Lord, because really what it's saying is you praise the Lord. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's important that we understand what we're saying. It, it, it really, it really is important. And that's, that's part of what makes all of our understanding in the Old Testament so important. Yes. Right. And, and we've talked about this, like, and, and one of the things that, that we're so concerned with is Bible literacy. And you have to understand these parts of the Old Testament to appreciate the gospel of Jesus Christ. You just have to, you know, like we talked about, you know, God or Jesus saying, uh, reciting this Psalm on the cross, mm -hmm. right? Or we've talked about even in, uh, in John three, when Jesus in John three sixteen when he, when, you know, that he is quoting psalm 2 right yeah. and so this is part of what what he's saying this is the proof of who he is right and and it is for them as well now if you grew up in the church like we did you know you you kind of are raised in believing with jesus and and i think to that end even though that's a good and beautiful thing you don't understand or maybe fully appreciate the power of these Psalms or these Old Testament passages and these Old Testament prophecies because they were the proof right. of Jesus as Messiah. Hundreds of them. Absolutely. And that's why I think the church does itself a disservice when we sometimes devalue mm. the Old Testament, right? We say, you got to make sure that you, and look, obviously Jesus is the center, okay? Whole thing, but that's the thing. The whole thing points to Jesus. People say, "Well, we focus on New Testament because we focus on Jesus." Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, yeah. the whole thing points to Jesus. I don't know what that sound was, but it's it's. No, I, th I think it was mind. the appropriate sound. I think that was the sound of Jesus entering the chat. Listen, um. <laughs> yes, that's right. Listen, loved ones, there's 
there's I, I go into preacher mode every week. I really apologize. I'm trying not to, but I do have to say this. Like there are, like, you cannot fully understand and appreciate the New Testament without the Old Testament. There are there are parts that just won't make sense. Like you know when you look at the especially like a book like Revelation. Like Revelation is going to be impossible to understand. Yeah. Without being able to throw back to so many Old Testament passages, like it's like it's just indecipherable without it. And so it's it's such an important part. And I I just want us to to understand that. Like and I know listen preachers like like myself like and and you can maybe attest to this too. It's sometimes it's easier for us. Actually, no, it's not even sometimes. It's easier for us to run to the Pauline epistles, to run to John, to the pastoral epistles, to, because they're almost like little mini sermons that are ready to go. And I can grab five verses out of Philippians, and I can do a sermon with that, and it can be a lot less daunting than grabbing these huge passages of Old Testament narrative or prophecy. But like they're they're both so important. See, I really just like doing the work. So like I, I don't I, knew I don't I, I don't run. Around. I don't run the I, easy it street. To that day in, in uh, our second year Bible college when I explained to you. That's the, right. It was on that day, I remember. Part. I said, you know what? No more easy street for me. I'm only yeah, doing, I'm, I'm preaching uh, Leviticus like <laughs> three weeks out of four. No, <laughs> no, it's true. It's, it's, it's true. You know, it, and that's the thing is like, but, but even in those passages, there's so much allusion to a belief system that exists in the Old yeah. Testament. You know, you talk about Revelation, like what about Hebrews? Hebrews is basically a New Testament guide to the Old Testament. If, if you read Hebrews without an awareness of the Old Testament, then you're like, who are we talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is greater than Moses. Well, if you don't know who Moses is. Um, yeah. And who Moses is to the current Jews. Right. Well, and not and so who he was, but who he is to them. Right. And so that's why it's so important that we take, you know, time to do a, a huge series like the story, right? So you did the story yes. a few years ago, we did the story last year, and just yeah, understanding that whole overarching narrative of the Bible as a whole story, um, because I think it's easy for you, you, know, you just kind of pick out pieces from here and here and there everywhere, especially if, you know, I mean, like our series are kind of, you know, I'll, let's do a Titus or let's do on this topic. And uh, I think it's important once in a while to step back and appreciate that this is a whole overarching narrative of, of God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, that's, you know, I know that we've, we've kind of, we've kind of switched gears in this particular, uh, I don't know if you call these episodes or what they are, but to talk more about biblical literacy. Mm. Um, but, you know, really what we're talking about is this week is, is prophecy. And the, the reason being is that like, we have to understand that these are significant. Like I, sometimes our familiarity with it is like, yeah, Jesus fulfills these prophecies. It's like, okay, like you got to understand like this is, uh, it is significant. And again, it, it goes from start to finish. The, the last verse that we have is revelation 1915, which says coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And again, that can seem like, well, why, why would we throw this one in the mix uh, for, uh, you know, for these particular uh, passages that we're looking at today? Right? Right. But, but we go back to the message from, from Sunday. That's right. And that this is, this is right out of Psalm 2. With right. that, with that, this is Psalm two nine talking about that iron scepter, and it's like as much as the story, overarching story, understanding it, it's so important. But then once you've got the overarching story, it's that's where we need to, to zone in on things like prophecy and some of these specific instances as as proof of Jesus. And that's look, that's part of why we do core fifty two as well, right? We've we've done right. the the story. That's overarching, that you know, at thirty thousand feet, if you will, and now we're going right down in on some of these key uh, concepts, and you know, I mean, prophecy is a big one. Yeah, because yeah, because again, you, this is the proof, and it's not it's not just a proof today. Like we we stand on the shoulders of giants now, 
right? Of faith that has been passed down for generations and generations and generations. This is what was used to show, yes, this Jesus is who he says he is. And because it's true, it changes everything. And it's our confidence in the promises that are that are yet to come. That Jesus yes. is, is coming back, right? That he is coming in glory. When you read the book, you know, when you read the book of Revelation with the proper understanding of what got us there, you know, that these these glad promises when Jesus says, you know, I'm going to prepare a place for you, mm -hmm. you know, and we see all these instances where God is already in the future, right? Like the the days your tomorrow. That you're worried about the days that are yet to come god's already there that the future is a memory to him hallelujah hallelujah you betcha yeah absolutely and it's uh, it just can't be it can't be overstated um how important it is to understand these parts of our faith you right. know and that we continue to grow and feed our faith by informing our faith right yes. that there's there's nothing there, honestly there's nothing virtuous of about well i believe it just because i believe it i don't need to know any of the reasons i don't need to know you don't have to give me any extra information because that's how much faith i have right. um and you know if, if we have faith in this one then we desire to be closer to him and we become that's closer right. to him by understanding him better and knowing him more Right. And, you know, understanding our Bibles is the main vehicle to do that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people say, I always need a word from the Lord. Yeah, here, here it is. There it is. Here's the word from the Lord right there. That's what, that's what you're waiting on. There it is. Yeah, there absolutely. Is. So. Very good. Well, that, uh, that's, yeah, that's what else can yeah, I say? I feel like that, uh, that hallelujah really put the, uh, really put the button on Yeah, yeah, today. I should have sang it. But uh, yeah, praise you, the Lord. Yeah, that's maybe that's what we we could end out with, just kind of doing some free verse of a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense. But uh, no, no, it's 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 good. And again, like the Psalms are 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 beautiful and they're they're poetic, um, and we they're true and they're true, and and that's that's the deal. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much, for, Dan, for your time again this week, and thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, I'll just, uh, why don't I close us with a, uh, a word of prayer. Let's do it. Our great God and Father, we acknowledge your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. And, and God, you, you sing over us and you, you give us reasons to sing of your glory and your goodness and your faithfulness. And Father, I pray that when we do that, we would do it with all sincerity. Uh, that we would not just believe in who you are, but we would know. Uh, of your goodness, and we would know of your deeds, and we would know of your prophecies, um, and that we would trust in your promises because we know them. And Father, we just so look forward, uh, as even as we rejoice in the promises and the prophecies that you've fulfilled, we so look forward um, to what's promised in, in books like Revelation of when you return and when things are restored, when things are made new, and we are with you uh, perfectly forever. And as we look forward to that day, Lord, I pray for those who have not yet made decisions, that you would draw them close to you, that you would draw us close to them and to show us the best way to interact with them in that. And uh, Father, we just trust in your promises and we thank you that they are always true. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Very good. Well, thanks again. And uh, thanks for everybody who tuned in and we look forward to seeing you again next week.